six new NFL rules. First rule is overtime has been eliminated from preseason football games. So what really brought this up was a couple of years ago, we had an overtime game in which the player was injured in the game for a game that didn't matter. And I really thought they were going to cancel overtime like that day. Rule number two, the establishment of a maximum number of players in the setup zone. Okay, so the setup zone. So do me a favor. Math Magic Man Land Imagination Time. Imagine the NFL states the, the, the field of play. From the 50 yard line to the 35 yard line for the receiving team on a kickoff. Okay. That is the setup zone. All right. That up, so it used to be when the NFL was fun and it was all about ratings and scoring return touchdowns, and not about safety. If you were receiving the football, i.e. you're kicking the ball to me, I can put my players anywhere. It doesn't matter where I put But in 2014 or 15, they changed the rule and they said that in that 50 yard to 35 yard block, I could only have, uh, I had to have at least eight players. On onside kicks, teams were putting 10 or 11 guys in that 15 yard block. And that's the reason why last year, the only onside kick that was recovered was the Cowboys and the Falcons, where the Falcons didn't understand the rules and they thought they could not touch the ball if the ball went 10 yards. They literally let the ball roll 10 yards and the Cowboys jumped on top. That's the frustrating part is, the rule is written so difficultly when it comes to onside kicks, not even the players understand the rule. <laughs> so the rule has now changed. You can only have a maximum of nine players in the box. And the reason for this is they're trying to get the percentage of onside kicks above 0%. All right, number three. I think this is the fan favorite right here. <clears throat> the replay official and designated members of the officiating department can now provide certain objective information to the on-field officials. When he says this information, he say, Ted, thumb of the box, replay this, look at this replay, and review it. Because if he can now, so it says the, the replay official and designated members of the officiating department can now provide certain objective information to the on-field officials. Does that mean they can call for a replay because that's how I read it, is that I can say, Ted, come review this play, and it doesn't cost either team a timeout or a challenge. I don't know, it just says provide certain objective information, so I don't think that they're changing anything. It's just, you know, because before it was just up to the people on the ground, they just had to talk to themselves, and nobody could tell them anything or, you know, to influence the outcome of the call. So maybe that means that when they huddle up, they can call the upstairs official and say, hey man, can you look and see if this is hold? Right, I think that's what, they're, that's what they're saying, is they can just do that rather than, run to the sidelines, pause the game for 10 minutes and check it out. I think now they can say, you know, what what happened? <laughs> you know? Do, yeah, we, do we need to look at this or not? You know, this a... There's nothing worse than seeing a ball that looks like a catch and then you look at it, oh yeah, he definitely didn't catch it. And they spend 45 minutes looking at it. Number four, the enforcement of all accepted penalties committed by either team during successive try attempts. Okay, so before we get started, a try attempt is the play after a touchdown. Okay, all right. Okay, so now the enforcement of all penalties committed by either team during a two-point conversion or extra point. So basically a long time ago, a couple years ago, there was a play in which Ted's team scored a touchdown and they were gonna go for two, but they went off sides. So they backed the ball up five yards. Then they were gonna kick the field goal. The defense went off sides. But instead of scooting the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, when you go for two, you go for two from the two yard line. Right. Not from the seven. When they moved it 40 yard, now it's now they're going for two I from the one yard line. So they're gonna change that. Now the ball will be placed but five. This is accepted penalties. I mean, can you still decline the penalty? Absolutely. Absolutely. The defense can still decline it. But what it means is once you start the series. Yeah. You say, okay, Ted, you're going to kick a field goal, score touch, kick a field goal, or go for two. From that point on, wherever the ball was set, that's where we're going to play ball from. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Kind of weird. Number five. Okay. 
Number five. Add a loss of down to the penalty of a second forward pass. Yes. So, what do you think about this? I kind of like the five-yard penalty the way it is. I kind of think it's dumb to cost so many losses. Down. I think a loss of down is only, is, you know, you make a play, you lose a down. That's what... <laughs> I just mean... I don't, I don't understand play. adding it, you know. But, yeah, I guess the five-yard penalty, yeah, but... Um, I just mean if on first down, I try a hook and lap, I throw you the ball, and, and then you I, get spun around and you're trying to pitch it backwards, and you actually pitch it forward, and you get tackled for a five-yard gain, I should not be third and 10 because we lost second down because you accidentally threw the ball. Right, I, I, I guess I'm, I agree. Yeah, I think if you, you know, you make a play, you lose it down. Not you lose it down just because. And so they would lose first down because of the penalty. And they would lose second down, right? Just because of what, that's that's way over painful. To me. Yeah, that's ridiculous. We're trying to make awesome plays happen in the field, not prevent them. Number six: expand jersey number options for certain positions. I don't. I don't even care. If Tom Brady wants to be number ninety-nine, let him. Like I do understand that you know the numbers in the grand scheme of things. You know, when you look down there, you can kind of know because of you know the number grouping. If it's offense or defense, or if it's you know, I, I kind of get that. You know, and then some of the big numbers are special teams. And well, the idea behind it was if you saw a number seventy catch a pass, the referee knew to throw a flag, throw a flag, because that's an ineligible player. He doesn't have to keep up with who's who. If you're right. in the seventies, you can't catch a pass. Follow us for more Sports Explained, crazy rules and what happened, who knows.